Hi everybody, we're back and right on time. So right now we're gonna listen to Jean-Christophe Delaunay, who's a former pen tester who used to play a lot with Microsoft Active, Microsoft Active Directory infrastructures, both on defensive and offensive aspects of Synactive, a French offensive security company. He is now in the reverse engineering team within his company, focusing on Windows and hardware topics. Uh, his talks is IO, MMU, and DMA attacks, or Input Output Memory Management Unit, and Direct Memory Access Attack. So let's start. Hi, everyone. Um, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, IO, MMU, and uh, Direct Memory Attacks. Um, but first of all, I'd like to thank uh, NorthSec staff for their incredible work uh, in, in order to organize the, this event uh, online. Uh, you guys rock, really. Thank you very much. Also, I hope uh, everyone is safe. A bit of presentation. Uh, I'm Jean-Christophe Delaunay, Fistours on Twitter. I'm working for a French uh, offensive security company called uh, Synactive. We have three poles, uh, pen test, reverse engineering, and development. And uh, as it was announced, I'm working in the reverse, reverse engineering team now, but was previously in the pen test one and used to focus on uh, Windows related subjects like uh, Active Directory stuff, uh, authentication schemes, etc. In the reverse engineering team, we focus uh, mainly on low level subjects um, like uh, yeah, reverse, hardware, pawn, etc. And um, if you understood well, yeah. I'm French, uh, I speak croissant, so please uh, excuse my poor English and, uh, and accent. Uh, now we do a quick roadmap. First, uh, I'll proceed to a short introduction on uh, DMA subjects. Uh, then I'll focus on the various uh, IOMMU implementation within uh, mainstream uh, OACs. And uh, finally, I'll explain some attacks, uh, then conclude and talk a bit on uh, our ongoing works. First, a quick disclaimer. Um, in this presentation, I'll talk about known attacks on uh, internal technology uh, only, and um, I'll stay quite high level. Um, this is mostly state-of-the-art stuff, so no real brand new fancy things for DMA experts, um, even though I'll talk a bit about uh, Thunderbolt uh, at the end. Um, attacks in this presentation target an already switched on computer, uh, the considered attack vector being the evil made one, you know, for example, when your room being accessed during a conference is, uh, or so, and so this is the evil made uh, scenario. What is DMA? Well, on this slide, I've put a simplified explanation of what it is. Um, on the left, you can see the normal workflow occurring when transferring data with an external peripheral. It goes through the CPU, involves uh, IO requests, interrupts, etc., in order to interact with the main memory. On the right is the DMA workflow. You can see that there's not uh, as many elements as on the left illustration. In fact, in order to increase performances, a dedicated bus is used with a dedicated controller to be able to access the main uh, memory directly. Here are the various technologies uh, using DMA. Um, you've probably heard of all of them. We have the good old uh, PCI and AGP, we have Firewire, PCI Express, etc. And uh, you can see that I, I've put many uh, illustrations regarding PC PCI Express, a graphic card, which is well known uh, to be using PCI Express, but also uh, an NVMe SSD drive and a USB-C connector with Thunderbolt support. These two also rely on PCI bus and uh, offer DMA. Now we'll talk about the uh, IOMMU. Intel implements uh, what it, it calls a virtualization technology for uh, directed IO, uh, which is also known as uh, the short VTD. Basically, um, this is the IOMMU stuff uh, I will talk about. Its purpose is to proceed to DMA remapping in order to control which memory locations are reachable and by who. 
this um, the ML remapping works as a um, classical MMU, thus the term uh, IO MMU, in that it takes uh, addresses manipulated by peripherals and translate them to uh, physical addresses. Actually, um, if the function is similar to a classical MMU, these peripheral addresses are not bound to any real virtual addresses that we could uh, observe while debugging a process, for example. They have their own uh, address space. A really important notion um, I will often refer to is the domain term. In PCI world, uh, peripherals are organized by what they call domains. Each domain uh, has its proper MMU configuration. And um, what is important to remember here is that all peripherals within a single domain share the same memory mapping. Basically, um, what it means is that, for example, if I have a graphic card and a network card which are under the same PCI domain, then the network card could access graphic cards memory pages. Um, we'll see later how that is important. In order to be identified, a peripheral is assigned a triplet, bus, dev, fun, where bus is the bus number, dev is obviously for device number, and fun represents uh, the function of the device. Um, for example, if we stick with the graphic card example, let's say that... Um, we have a cyber digital NSA compliant graphic card, which also makes, uh, I don't know, coffee. Well, we would have two triplets, uh, one with a function for graphics and um, one with a function for coffee. So we have two triplets. So um, we'll finish this uh, short introduction with uh, some use cases of IOMMU implementation. The first one, uh, which is actually the, the well-known one, is the hypervisor use case. Um, imagine I have a, a virtual machine and a, a peripheral attached to it. Because my peripheral is attached to, to this VM, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want it to be able to access to my uh, host uh, main memory. In the OS use case, well, it's pretty the same thing, except that I want to protect my OS or kernel from rock peripherals. So I must ensure that peripherals can only access their memory pages. Um, now that we've seen a bit uh, what is DMA and uh, IOMMU, we'll take a close look uh, on implementations on uh, various uh, OSs. First, um, let's take a look at Microsoft Windows. On Windows, um, IOMMU is used by technologies such as Hyper-V, Virtualization Based Security, which is also called VBS, and um, the new kernel DMA protection. Hyper-V, well, you've normally heard about it, is the Microsoft virtualization technology. VBS on its side relies on uh, Hyper-V and permits to uh, isolate critical components as LSASS or, or stuff like that from uh, unsecure world. We'll see what it is after. And finally, the, the kernel the DMA protection is a new feature uh, introduced with uh, Windows 10 uh, version 1803. Basically, um, <clears throat> what does kernel DMA protection is, um, it's... Um, it's preventing peripheral, which have not a driver with memory uh, isolation cap capability, like DMA remapping, to work while the computer is locked. And uh, you can see uh, that I wrote on, on the slides that this is according to Microsoft, because unfortunately, Windows being closed source, we can't be 100% sure there are no, uh, and there are not a lot of technical documentation on the IOMNU usage in here. So, um, a reverse engineering work is needed and actually is in progress on our side. On this slide, I've put a scheme of what is VBS. We, we won't go a lot in details on it as this is not the purpose of this presentation, but on the right is where the user evolves when using uh, his computer. It's called VTL0. And uh, on the left, you have the secure world, uh, which is called VTL1 and is uh, isolated from uh, VTL0. Mm, technologies such as uh, credential guard, device guard, etc., 
they all rely on VBS and um, the underlying uh, stuff is uh, the IOMM. Now let's talk about uh, Linux IOMMU implementation. On Linux, um, the IO IOMMU is not activated by default. Um, you can change this with a special boot argument, uh, Intel IOMMU on, but it's not here by default. And by the way, there is also an AMD uh, IOMMU, but this talk is on Intel. So <clears throat> each uh, IOMMU type defines an uh, IOMMU OPS structure, which serve as a, an abstraction layer while interacting with the hardware. We'll see this on the slide after. And um, here on the slide, when I say platform type, uh, I, I don't refer to x86, uh, x64, et cetera, but more on Intel, Equinox, Mikrotik uh, also. In Linux world, um, a virtual address as seen by a peripheral is called an IOVA. It is associated with a physical address, PADDR, uh, with its corresponding SELs. On Linux, um, my mapping is achieved per domain and not per peripheral, but also each peripheral has its own domain. So in fact, each peripheral has its own uh, address space. So here is the uh, IOMMU OPS structure for uh, the Intel platform. And um, looking at it, you can see why it is considered as an abstraction layer. And I've also put uh, on the right uh, the map function and the corresponding uh, unmap function. You have all the function pointers in here. So we have here for Intel, but we would have the same for AMD, uh, Equinox, etc. And um, we finished the implant implantation part with uh, macOS. Um, Apple understood many years ago that uh, hardware security is really important. Um, they've been adding uh, IOMMU support for quite some time, actually. And um, if uh, a lot of parts are open source, uh, we can take a look. But unfortunately, uh, all the driver parts is not. So um, at Synactive, we began to reverse engineering the UEFI part in order to understand how it is implemented. In um, our reversed work, we saw that uh, UEFI is uh, involved in the IOMMU configuring process. This, uh, in particular, means that IOMMU is uh, enforced at boot time. Also, um, we saw that there is a custom uh, UEFI protocol permitting drivers to, to configure uh, IOMMU uh, mappings for peripheral. Um, uh, precision here when I say protocol, where it is protocol in a UEFI context, basically um, there is an interface implementing functionalities and this uh, interface has a custom GUID. Um, drivers can talk to this interface, they just have to specify uh, the, the GUID they want to talk to. And um, when the UEFI hands off to the OS, the Apple uh, IOPC family driver uh, reinitializes the IOMMU for the uh, OS context. This driver uh, also declares the Apple VTD device mapper class, which uh, overrides the IO mapper class. Well, here you can easily guess uh, what this class do as their names are pretty talkative. Um, also, the Apple VTD device mapper class redefines IOVM map memory and the corresponding IOVM unmap memory API, which permit to add and remove memory mapping within the IOMMU. And uh, what is really, really, really important is like, um, it's unlike Linux, uh, macOS uses a single domain for all peripherals. And we'll see uh, after why this is really important. Okay. Um, We've seen the theoretical stuff um, and we'll now see the attacks. Um, actually, if you got bored until now, I hope it, would, it will change now, we'll see. Uh, once again, we'll start with uh, Windows. A quick reminder first uh, that we consider here that the target computer is uh, already switched on and is locked. As we saw earlier, Windows does not use IOMMU by default. The workflow of this attack is um, pretty easy to understand, actually. First, uh, we find a way to connect to the PCI bus. 
Um, we then probe the target computer main memory searching for uh, the unlocking routine. We patch the password checking routine. Et voilà. You can log, log whatever password is entered. Now we'll see a bit, a bit more in details how to do so. So I said we are probing main memory searching for unlocking routine. This routine is called um, MSVP password validate and is located in uh, Intel and shared .dll. In red, I've highlighted the RTL compare memory API, which is used in this uh, routine to compare the answered password with a normally valid password. On the left, um, I've displayed the opcodes corresponding to the instruction in uh, IDA Pro. Now, um, as I said, we want to patch the password checking routine in order to be able to log in whatever password is entered. Here is the result of such a patch. As you see, um, I've not the previous, uh, the previous uh, conditional jump to ensure that we continue in the branch we are interested in. And by the way, this branch being the one that basically says uh, this is the good password. So we manage to, uh, to have a good password, whatever password we are entering. To proceed to this attack, um, we have to search for a specific opcode in uh, main memory. Uh, for that, um, we use the awesome PCR leech tool um, from the no less awesome uh, of Frisk. And uh, if you look at this at this slide, you can notice many things. Um, first, my amazing Microsoft Paint skills. I'm quite proud of it. Um, but more importantly, the two opcodes patterns uh, I'm searching for in memory. We can see that the C6OFA4 in red and FBF, uh, etc., in orange, we are looking for them at the offset 73A and 73E in memory. Um, here on the slide, I, ha I uh, haven't uh, highlighted these offsets as they are, were not aligned. <clears throat> but we will see the offset on the next slide. Now we can take a look at the patch. We are patching at offset 73B with opcodes, nope, 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 etc. So what you can understand from this slide is that we are searching for two specific patterns at two specific offsets and provide a patch to be applied at a specific offset. This kind of signature is all you need to be able to use a PCI image. Well, apart from the uh, hardware, of course. So the prerequisites to proceed to these attacks are hardware and software. You can use an FPGA Spartan with a USB 3 extension card for performances, or the PCIe Screamer R2. There is a, a more recent version of it, uh, which is based on the M2 form factor too. And, uh, whatever adapter permitting to connecting uh, to the PCI bus, actually. On the software side, uh, you can use PCI Leach on Linux or Windows, and you also need uh, the signatures, as I've been talking about in the, the previous slides. Um, here is an example of my uh, FPGA with its uh, USB extension card on the top. So in blue, you can see the, the extension card. Uh, actually, the FPGA is quite big. Uh, we will use it uh, more for tests, etc. cetera. Uh, when you, you will want to attack, you will prefer the, the PCI e screamer because it's uh, much uh, slower, uh, much tinier. On Linux, there is also no IO MMU uh, used by default. The attack principle, um, it's exactly the same, actually. You are searching for the password uh, unlocking routine, which is, uh, in this case, verify password hash uh, from the PAM Unix.so library. Then all you have to do is to patch it. And you have uh, here in the, the bottom of the, the slides, you have the, the signature for this uh, specific library. And finally, uh, macOS. Um, so this part is the most interesting as the IOMMU is enabled by default, as we said earlier. So um, in order to be able to compromise our target, we must find a way to bypass this uh, IOMMU protection. Um, Colin Rothwell uh, found some interesting vulnerabilities during his uh, PhD thesis. He did a really, really great job. and. Uh, Following his thesis, he released with uh, other researchers uh, the Thunderclap platform, and 
This platform contains both hardware and software and permits, among other things, to um, compromise a system running with macOS prior to version 10.12.4. The principle is the following. Um, you may recall that um, I told you that on macOS, peripherals are under the same domain. This means that they share the same address space. So this is possible to access my network card's memory pages. Well, provided that this network card relies on PCE Express technology, of course. Colin Rothwell um, exploited this behavior to be able to uh, execute commands uh, as root on macOS before uh, version 10.12.4. Let's see the attack now. Um, first, uh, we have to understand how network packets are described. Uh, these packets are described by uh, what we call an MBUF structure, uh, which you can see on the slide uh, in here. We'll uh, see also this uh, structure on the next slide, so I'm switching to it. And uh, this particular structure uh, has many fields uh, across C unions. Among these fields, uh, we can see that we have uh, M date in red, M packet date in orange, and M X in blue. <clears throat> these elements represent data, which is uh, stored in the packet. And um, because of the union type, there can be only one type at a time. Uh, depending on specific flags. You can see the these flags in comments in the, the structure. You know, it's a MX set, M packet header set, etc. And spoiler alert, we are interested in here in the MX1, which saw which stores data in external buffer. So if you look at the MX, uh, I said that uh, we are interested in it. And this means that we are uh, interested in the corresponding flag uh, which will enable it. And this corresponding flag, which, which is uh, MX, but uh, with uppercase, um, is stored in the MBUF structure header, uh, as you see on the slide in purple. So in this specific structure, we have the uh, um, a field which contains the flag, uh, which maybe we can set. Okay, so let's say we have the MX flag set which, by the way, uh, occurs when there are big packets, so pretty often. Um, because an external buffer is uh, allocated to store the data, it must be freed uh, when it is no longer needed, okay? The function in charge of freeing the buffer is stored in the MX structure, actually, and it is stored as a function pointer. So you should now uh, normally see what is the problem. Because we have a DMA access, we can modify this function pointer through DMA and also control its parameters. And they are also members of the MX structure. So we have a complete access to this structure. We can uh, alter it. And all we have to do is override this pointer with the KUNC execute API. And this uh, specific API permits to launch a binary as root in the user land. And all you have to do is to wait for the buffer to be freed. And uh, when it's freed, this function will be called. Apple patched this uh, vulnerability um, by adding some random values, which are XORT with the uh, data to be protected. So what it means is that uh, if you don't know uh, these random values, you can't uh, proceed to this attack anymore. And these random values are set during the boot process. So this attack is no longer feasible. And if you remember in our um, uh, attack vector, we said it was evil made. So the computer must be uh, already switched on and we don't uh, want it to, uh, to reboot. Now let's conclude. DMA attack vectors are more and more discussed and are still a real threat model, despite uh, being known for ages, actually. Um, as expected, macOS is ahead of its contestants uh, regarding hardware security, but Windows seems to take the, the physical attack vector very, very seriously. Um, we plan to go further than the current state of the art during our French uh, Rapid project, uh, which I'll be talking a bit uh, now. So, this, this state of the art was achieved because we plan to go further. And uh, 
our project is called DM Harvests and consists in studying DMA subjects relying on a PCI bus from software to hardware. We plan to look at each mainstream OSs, whether it's open source or not, and various technologies such as M2, Thunderbolt, etc., and also architectures like uh, AXT6, uh, ARM, etc., and much more things. At the moment, uh, we are studying Thunderbolt on Windows, and um, because it's closed source, we are, we are reversing it. The Intel software suite for Thunderbolt uh, contains a, what we call the universal Windows platform application. Um, you probably know the, this stuff. Uh, it's the new Microsoft, well, not a new Microsoft application model with the online store, etc. We used to call it a Metro. Um, so this is the UWP uh, application. Um, this suit uh, also has a, a service which communicates with the uh, application, but also with uh, the Windows driver frameworks drivers. And there are two drivers. There is a, a userland uh, driver and there is a kernel on driver. These are the UMDF for userland and uh, KMDF for kernel on. And to finish, here's the the first uh, schematic we've done to represent the Intel Thunderbolt stuff, you can see that the UWP application uh, and the service are communi communicating, communicating uh, through another binary uh, and the w WDF interact with the plug and play manager. And uh, this is what we are doing uh, at the moment and plan to, uh, to publish about it later. The aim is to keep digging always to the hardware layer to understand how IOMME is used, actually. Thank you, if you have uh, any questions. Thank you very much, Jean-Christophe. Merci. Uh, we'll give maybe two to three minutes for the participants to go and have a look at the questions, maybe upvote some of them or ask. We're three minutes ahead, so things are yes. good. Hi. Welcome back. Okay. So first question, are you planning to do some IOMMU DMA VRT SRT research on the iPhone? Uh, yes, we plan to do it. Um, actually, the, um, the rapid stuff, the French stuff, uh, at the beginning, we, we targeted uh, solely the, the PCI uh, Express technologies because there are so many things, but as uh, iOS, iPhone, uh, other phones are a, a target of interest, uh, they are more and more targeted. Uh, we plan to do it, yes. And um, I think it, it will be a good thing to look at it, yes. In the near future or more like in a few years? <laughs> Difficult to say. Difficult to say. Um, uh, as I said, we've uh, began to reverse the uh, Thunderbolt stuff on uh, on Windows, and it's pretty fast. So um, le let's finish that, <laughs> and after we'll see. I bet. Okay, good. Um, so if you did some DMA research on the iPhone already, are you planning to release this research as well? We haven't done uh, the the research on uh, iPhone, and because this uh, project is public, yes, we. We will publish if we find something. Okay. Uh, is the latest macOS still vulnerable, vulnerable to thunderclap DMA attacks? No, no, no. As I said, uh, this particular vulnerability was patched, and the thunderclap uh, platform uses this uh, vulnerability, so not exploitable anymore. But it's interesting. Good. Um. Sorry, are there any kind of signal, signature, or behavior that Threat Hunter could monitor to detect such attacks in real life? Hmm. Signal, signature, or uh, behavior? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe if the the workstation that, that was uh, targeted uh, wasn't rebooted. And uh, if, uh, yeah, I think it's the, the only thing because uh, the principle of this kind of attacks is that you access the, the direct memory, so the RAM, and when you reboot the RAM, it's just 
slash for the most part. So um, it, it may be if you if you don't reboot the the computer, but uh, it's more likely being it's more likely very difficult to uh, to spot this kind of stuff. Except if the, there are some backdoors after that, but uh, it's not it's not the, the the DMA stuff. Okay. Have you heard about DMA attacks targeting embedded devices using architectures such as ARM MIPS? Um, embedded device, not really. Um, uh, a guy in my in my company did some uh, some stuff uh, on the um, HP ILO. It's not really embedded, but it's kind of of server. Uh, and uh, there is also uh, the guy which produces the the PCIe uh, screamer Ramsey Amin, who did some DMA on the iPhone. So. Well, it's not really embedded devices, but you have the, this kind of architecture uh, beside. You have the, the ARM, etc. Could we say that it's like a little bit under research? Or? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Okay. Uh, can you read write PPM registers at physical address fed 40,000 through DMA when the IMMOU is disabled? Uh, which address? So I've heard the TPM, yeah, and uh, registers at physical address fed forty thousand. You mean Through you the... mean in the in the CPR of the TPM, because the TPM has Not some true. registers, and the principle of the TPM is that it's a it's a secure device, it's secure component, so you can't access it. Uh, I don't know if I understood well the question. Because if well, if it's that uh, no you can't you can't access the TPM but uh, whatever the TPM is um, exporting to be used by the the exploitation system uh, at this moment yes you can because it's in main main memory. Okay, I think yeah you pretty much answered it. Are there IMMUS in embedded systems such as STM thirty two F stuff? Mm, good question. I don't think so for the STM. Well, honestly, I, I don't really know. I don't really know, but I don't think so. Okay. Are you leveraging the work done by the Inception project in your research? Uh, yes, the Inception project was really cool. Actually, I've uh, I've done some uh, pull requests in it, but uh, the the Inception project, uh, the the guy who did this uh, really great work, he he doesn't commit a lot, so. Uh, Actually, the the what is done is inception is basically the same thing as PCI leach. It's just that inception also uh, supports the firewire case. So when we're doing uh, when you're a pen tester and you want to do some attacks, if you have uh, some firewire, you will uh, switch to uh, inception. Otherwise, you you'll use uh, PCI leach. Okay, and one last question. For non-Apple hardware, does IM, IOMMU seems to be correctly implemented at the UFI level? We haven't looked at it, so I can't answer, unfortunately. But That's we good. plan to. Near, uh, near or long future? <laughs> same thing, but actually because, uh, as I said, there are a lot of stuff uh, which is uh, open source. Uh, um, I think they probably uh, already uh, some stuff on, on the internet. So somebody probably looked at it. I don't know. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Stuff, for being with thank us. Thank you to you. Thank you very much. A uh, big round of applause to you through the chat. Thank you. Come on, guys. <laughs> and uh, we'll take a short break and we'll be back.